Hey, we're here with Mike at KnobCon 10. Yeah, good morning. This is my second KnobCon and uh, my second time showing out some custom synthesizers I've been working on for the last three years. And they're all based on what's called the Nucleus voice card, which is the, the mono synth over here is the Nucleus voice card. They're all patchable. So you have uh, 60 patch storages. It's three oscillators, two analog, one digital, an eight pole multi-mode filter, four ADSRs with delay and hold, three, uh, four LFOs with also delay wave shaping, and about 65 modulation sources and about 35 destinations per voice. And then I took four of those, expanded the, uh, the interface from a small interface where you have to select which oscillator, which LFO you're working on, which ADSR you're working on, and then instead give you 68 knobs, 70 LEDs, and 41 switches to get at, which this is a four voice poly, can be expanded up to six voices. We'll make custom versions with 49 keys or with 61 keys. And then that will go up to, uh, you can expand the whole system up to 16 voices. Um, each voice card, it's rather complicated. That's the voice card for it. You can see it's digital front end and then all analog uh, sound source. So that's the Nucleus voice card. And there's four of them in here. One, two, three, four. And you can, because yesterday you were, uh, I saw something that said nine voices, but then you just said 16. The, so. This was, yeah, the, uh, there's a little dip switch on each voice card and that allows you to have up to 16 voices. So if somebody came along, these are going to be, be built custom. So you decide what key bed you want, how big, whatever, how many voices you want in it. Um, if you have special interface desires or custom graphics or whatever. And so this standard case, this size, I can fit in six. If I expand out to, to 61, I can fit nine, but the size of this can be increased and it can go up to 16. So 16 is the maximum number of voices that, that would be quite a monster, <laughs> 16 <laughs> voices. But yeah, it's, it's capable of going up to 16 voices. And each voice is very complicated. Uh, oscillator one has all your standard waveforms, PWM and all that kind of thing. Uh, but it also has wave folding as a sub oscillator. The sub oscillator has its own PWM, and you can modulate the sub oscillator PWM. You can modulate the waveform of the synthesizer of, of the oscillator. You can modulate the level, and of course, pitch modulation too. And every oscillator has all of those modulation capabilities. You have separate glide and separate bend rates for uh, every oscillator separately too. And then the mixer levels after that. You have a eight pole filter, which is multi-mode, which is controlled here. So it goes from 12 variable band pass, variable band width, high pass, and, and 24 dB uh, low pass. So it's basically a four pole high pass filter followed by a four pole low pass filter. And you can separate the frequencies so you have variable band width, which is really a cool little effect. Yeah, you can modulate that width, you can modulate resonance, you can modulate the cutoff frequency, of course. Uh, and then that goes over to uh, effects section, that's a 24-bit uh, DSP. You have, you can select a hall or reverb, you can select a chorus, delay, or a fanger. And then all of these are also modulatable. So you just click a button and you decide how you want to modulate it. And that can be modulated from any of the ADSRs, the LFOs, aftertouch, pitch, pitch up, pitch down, bend. You can do, there's a series of math functions that you can combine, add, cross phase, delay, limit, quantize, um, change the shape of it. And you can do that with any of the modulation sources. One of the standard one would be like, maybe you want to use aftertouch to crossfade between two LFOs or crossfade between two oscillators. You could use the mod wheel and the LFO and that would be to use you know, your standard vibrato type thing, multiply those together and send it out to pitch. So there's four ADSRs, each having its own delay and hold function, each having four different ways, including looping to do triggering. You can also have three different shapes and you can modulate sustain level or you can modulate the overall time of the ADSR. So one of the cool things you can do with time is you can make a natural sound. You can use pitch as a modulation source for time so that as you go up in frequency, you can make the time shorter. 
So you get snappier sounds at the high end and longer sounds at the low end, like a lot of natural instruments like pianos and things are. Uh, but you can, you know, maybe you want to do time with uh, velocity. So as you hit it harder, you get a snappier ADSR. My point is, I don't know what you want to do as sound designers, <laughs> you know, so I don't put very many limitations. Those 68, this one has 68 sources and 45 destinations. They're all simultaneously available and they're all running at six kilohertz. So that's a very high update rate. Um, they're all high accuracy and um, your LFOs will even run into audio rates as well. And you can use those for cross modulation on the FM of, of the filter or anything else. So it's a very flexible synthesizer. When you find a sound, you go over right here and you hit save, you give it a nice little name, and uh, you've got it saved away. And if you want to take a sound that you've created on the small nucleus, you can use that. You can sysx it out and sysx it back into here, or vice versa. Uh, the difference with, of course, this has the, the uh, DSP effects section, but they're still compatible. So, because of the same voice card. Uh, yeah, voices are very easy to recall. Just collect them, hit them, and then. And it takes just a few seconds, you know, to recall them. But this is a, I'm kind of designing this to be performance related as well. So this whole section down here is basically a performance section. You've got macros, which will allow you to just pan between four parameters. You can set up any way you want. You have two of those. You've got an arpeggiator section. And then in this section here, once you press this white button, these 10 black buttons along here will allow you to instantly recall your 10 favorite performance sounds. So you can just be playing along, whack that button, 10th of a second later, you have a new sound. You can go in and get the other 60 um, by going up in here and selecting them, but you this can have the, 10 uh, right off the bat, right in front of you. This will be multi-timbral, so there's separate outputs for all of the voices, so if you have six, there's six. There'll be six outputs in the back, um, and you will be able to go into uh, setup. You just set it up, you say, I want that to be MIDI channel one, you give that a sound, you can set the other one, MIDI channel two, whatever you want to do, you can assign one to the keyboard, you could have three of the channels running drums and then the final one being a mono synth that you play there as a voice. Wow. So this will be multi-timbral. So there's uh, quite a lot of possibility with this. Yeah, I mean, I want to give people a synthesizer that will live with them for a long time. That they, they'll wake up one day and say, you know what, I haven't played with hard sync for a while. What does that do? I haven't played with a three-stage, you know, digital ring modulator. What does that sound like? What can I make that do? You know, and then they, well, I have four LFOs. I've only used one. What should I use the other LFOs for? And you realize, oh, I can have subtle effects with PWM. I can use them for wave shaping. I can use them to, to go into the sustain modulation and have a subtle movement on the filters or bandwidth changes slowly on the filters. And you can realize you can put a lot of life back into it. So that's why this is not set up in your standard way. When you turn it on, it's, it's what you want it to be. And that's when you decide how you like to build sounds, that's what this initialize button down here is for. You come up with your favorite starting point and you assign that here. And so for a lot of people, that'll be the amp mod, the filter mod, you know, this will be pitch LFO and so forth. And you can set it up like your standard subtractive synthesizer. But if you're a West Coast guy, maybe you want to set that up so that oscillator two is set up to FM, oscillator three, the digital one is, is maybe a, a user wave table, and oscillator one, I'm going to set that up for wave folding. That's the way I like it, because I like West Coast stuff. I want really heavy duty, you know, crunchy oscillator sound before I go anywhere else. That's kind of cool that you get to create your own init patch. Yeah, yeah, and basically you create a patch, and when you've done that, your standard patch, and you maybe, because there's a lot of stuff in here. I mean, you set up all your adders and your multipliers and your crossfaders and all those kinds of things. And then when you've done that, which is a lot of work, and you say, that's where I like to start, you save that patch and then assign it to the initialize button. And then sometimes people will come here and like, it doesn't play anymore. Well, because you've probably done something really interesting with the modulation routing, you can come back and this is your savior, you know.
or you yeah, can just yeah. load any old patch. But I mean, that's that's yeah. the idea behind that. It's your starting. Takes you back to square one. Yeah, the way you like to work on your synthesizer. So I'm not telling you how you have to do this. You tell yourself how you want to work with this synthesizer. You tell yourself how you like the modulation paths and, how, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm, yeah, things are oscillator to filter to, to distortion VCA to output VCA. You know, you can't. But but how you want to really deal with that? There's so much internal routing. There's so much internal modulation that it's really kind of up to you. Yeah, that sounds great. Now you were saying you just you build these to order. Yes, they will be. The Nucleus module is a purchasable module, and that will fit in a 60 HP box, or you can put it into your you know, Euro rack or whatever. You can run it on a desktop like that, and it's a great sounding little mono synth with all the same basic features other than the effects box. But when I get to this, I kind of want to talk to people and say, what do you want it to be like? Because I think an instrument, when like get to this point, it's got to feel right to you. What draws you to it? You know, is it the color? Is it the knobs? Is it the features? Is it the shape? Is it the size of the keyboard? Or do you not even want a keyboard? You just want a desktop version. You know, same reason a guitar player buys a Flying V or a Gibson or whatever. They love that feel. They love that sound. They love the weight of it. They love the shape of it. Whatever it is, it's more than just the sound it makes. It's how it makes you feel. And so I think if you have the opportunity to talk to somebody like myself and say. This is what I want. When I'm, up, when I'm up on stage, I want brushed aluminum cover on it with blue knobs. Cool. <laughs> awesome. You know, let's build that. That'll be fun. And so at that point, you're talking about maybe 20 of these a year. And, and I'm completely happy with that. I'd rather have 20 ecstatic customers that are loving their instrument than, than thousands. Yeah. You know? so well, what kind of, cool. as far as pricing, I mean, I know that's, that's going to be... Well, unique this, to each one. Yeah, this setup as it is right now is probably about thirty-four to thirty-five hundred. Hopefully, with the supply chain situation that we all have with every part, and if you talk to anybody here, we're all struggling with supply chain and parts at this point. But that's the that's the expectation about thirty-five hundred for this, and it's going to be about four hundred dollars a voice after that. Wow. You know, so depending on you drop the keyboard away, you make a desktop, it'll be a little less. You go to a 61 key, it'll be a little more. You know, hopefully, Fatar will give us access to that multi-touch, you know, uh, polyphonic after-touch keyboard, and I'll be able to get some of those and put them in. So it's going to be up to what the customer wants. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So how can people contact you? Well, I'm, I've got a uh, pretty active Facebook site. I've got a website. It's my name, www.artisanelectronicinstruments.com, and so. Uh, there, from there, that'll send you to my YouTube channel, which I'll be pouring out a whole bunch of demos when I get back. I'll, I'll be honest, guys, the last two months, this whole thing was built in a month. I, I, every second of my life, as my wife will tell you, <laughs> was spent getting this ready as just a prototype form for KnobCon. So when I get back home, I'm going to really be doing a lot of demos, a lot of sound demos, so people can hear what this thing can do talk about how you can do all the mass, all the routing. It's very it's very cool, very interesting. Um, once you learn how to do it, it's not that hard. Um, so there'll be a lot of demos. So yeah, the Facebook site will send you to the website, or the website will send you to the Facebook site, and they'll all send you to the YouTube site, where you can see lots of demos on these things. Sounds great, Mike. Yep. Thanks. You're welcome.